Hey guys, hope you're well. I'm Toby, one of the Young Inspectors, and today we're going to be talking to you about exam and assessment stress. Hey guys, I'm Anna, one of the Young Inspectors, and I hope everyone is doing very well today. In today's video, we have a very special guest with us, Dr. Joshua Eldridge, who is a clinical psychologist and will be giving you out some tips on how to manage stress throughout assessments and exams. Be sure to stay tuned throughout the video because maybe one of your questions could be answered throughout. So sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the video. Great to have you here with us, Dr. Joshua Eldridge. The first question we have for you is, what can we do to stop exams and assessments becoming too stressful? Thank you so much for letting me be here. So, I mean, the first thing I want to say is that stress and exam stress and assessment stress is so normal and so natural. And actually, one thing I really want to get across is that not only is it natural and normal, but actually some stress is actually helpful for us. Research shows us that actually a bit of stress, a good amount of stress, even quite a high amount of stress helps us perform. If we were to draw a curved graph, on, on the bottom would be performance and on the left hand side would be stress. On the left hand side, if we were not feeling any stress at all, probably we're not going to do amazingly well. But if we're feeling a bit of stress, a medium amount of stress, even quite a lot of stress, research shows that actually our performance is really good. So stress is actually helping us perform and perform better. If we're really, really, really struggling with seriously high stress and feeling completely overwhelmed, my advice is just look to balance the other things. So look to just do those bits of exercise in the day, have a break, play some computer games, watch TV or Netflix, and just take it easy and connect with the people around you so that when you come back to revising, hopefully you'll be feeling that bit more relaxed and having that healthy stress. That's great. Thank you so much. The next question is... What is the fight, flight and freeze response and why is it important in relation to exam and assessment stress? A really good question, Toby. I think some people might have heard of this already. So basically, in the middle of our brains, we've got a part of our brain which is called the amygdala, which looks a bit like the nut, which is an almond. Now, we've had this part of our brain since way back when in caveman times. And essentially, we've still got this part of our brain, which is designed to help us with immediate life threat. So in caveman times, this would have been facing a saber-toothed tiger. It gets us ready to run back to our cave as quickly as possible or grab a stick and try and take on the saber-toothed tiger. And also the freeze response. With a saber-toothed tiger, that might look like standing there waiting for the tiger to go away. With exams and assessments, that might look like procrastinating a lot. But the thing is, we no longer are faced with saber-toothed tigers all that much. But the same thing happens sometimes with other things like exams. Our brain treats it like a saber-toothed tiger. It gets us ready to run away. We might feel that kind of heart palpitations or breathing really quickly. But actually, it's not an immediate life threat. So we need to remind ourselves that the best thing we can possibly do is to stick in the situation and our bodies, if we let them, will naturally calm and cool themselves down. That's great. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand over to Anna for the next two questions. Thank you so much for your response. That was very informative. What do you think is important towards the build-up of exams, whilst writing exams and post-exams? Yeah, it was three different parts. I'll try and break it down a few different tips. In the build-up, I think one tip is that some people really benefit from revision timetables and that might be coming up with a weekly schedule of the different days and a morning slot, an afternoon slot. Some people like more structure than that and like to schedule kind of specific hours. Find what works best for you and have in there a minimum amount of time that you hope to do kind of each day or on certain days. So that even if you're sitting there and it's feeling like things aren't going in, remember that don't rely on what you can remember in that moment, because actually a lot goes in, even if we don't think it does and unconsciously and kind of um, when we're sleeping, we're also processing information. So revision timetables are obviously a really key tip. And as we said before, keeping balance, so a quick reminder, exercise, healthy eating as best as you can, keeping connected to others, all of those things will do wonders. In the actual exams, if that fight-flight response is going off, there's some really simple things you can do to help. I remember when I was um, still in my kind of GCSE exams and assessments, and things like having an object from home, I had kind of a special kind of um, stone that I was in my pencil case that I'd just hold. 
smells like aromatherapy oil on your wrists that you can smell and take in or a nice perfume those things that get us tuned into what's going on around us and our senses can all really help you can also google things like take five breathing or window breathing these are all wonderful strategies and most of all, afterwards, make sure you celebrate all your hard work, however it felt like it went, and probably it went better than you think it did. That sounds great. Thank you so much. And lastly, how can young people reach out if they feel like they need some extra support? So our team is actually from a mental health support in schools team. Um, and so we're one option that you can speak to pastoral um, care in school um, and ask for early help mental health support. Um, we help with people who are facing stress, anxiety or feeling low in mood. Pastoral care in school can always help or go online and see what pastoral care or counselling options are available. Here in Merton, that includes things like Off the Record or COOF. And also there's some really good CBT based books for exam stress, one called Starving the Anxiety Gremlin. So you can always pick up one of those as well. Once again, thank you so much for taking us through the support networks that are available for young people. No worries. Thank you very much for your time and um, wish everyone all the best in their exams. So you just reached the end of the video. We hope it gives you some extra support during your exams or assessments. And we also hope you have a wonderful day ahead of you. If you have any further questions or topics you'd like us to explore further, feel free to email us or speak to your MYP, also known as Merton Youth Parliament, because we are always happy to help. And remember, hands, face and space so that together we can beat that virus. I'm Toby. We look forward to receiving your comments. Tell us what you would like to see next and stay well. Hey guys, it's Anna. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it very useful. 